And now, from the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida, here's TV 13 Sports Director Scott Palmer. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Gator Bowl, where later tonight the Clemson Tigers will take on the defending national champion Pittsburgh Panthers. Well, thousands of Clemson fans from the Carolinas have made their way to Jacksonville this week for tonight's game. But for those of you who couldn't make the trip, you'll be able to see the game live here on TV 13 beginning at 9 o'clock. Well, now to the business at hand. In the next half hour, we'll show you how each team earned a ticket here to Jacksonville tonight, as well as talk with some of the key people that made it happen. The Clemson Tigers were one of the most improved teams in the country this year, turning a season mark of 3-6-2 into a record of 8-2-1. Clemson began its season with a tough assignment September 10th at Death Valley. It was an aroused Tiger ball club that charged down the hill to meet defending ACC champion and 10th-ranked Maryland. The task of turning this enthusiasm into performance fell on the shoulders of first-year coach Charlie Pell. Maryland took an early lead, 7-0, but the Tigers tied it up on a 93-yard interception return for a touchdown by Rex Barnes. Clemson moved ahead of the Terps in the second half, 14-7, but a pair of late Maryland scores spoiled the season opener for the Tigers, 21-14. The next week, Clemson traveled to Athens to play defending Southeastern Conference champion Georgia in the rain. The Tigers scored their only touchdown of the game in the third quarter. It was set up by a pass from ACC Player of the Year Steve Fuller to Dwight Clark. The drive ended when Lester Brown carried in from the three. The extra point made it 7 to nothing, sending the Tiger sidelines into celebration. Georgia fought back to score with just 20 seconds to play, but missed the conversion. Clemson had won its first game of the season, 7 to 6. The Tigers remain in the state of Georgia on the following Saturday to play Coach Pepper Rogers' Georgia Tech Ball Club for the last time. Clemson moved out front fast. The big play of the first half was a 66-yard pass from Steve Fuller to all-ACC selection Jerry Butler. Butler went on to set a single-game school record with 163 yards receiving as Clemson rolled over Georgia Tech 31-14. This play by another all-conference pick, Randy Scott, was typical of the new reckless abandon of the Clemson defense. Clemson's third straight road game was a 31-13 victory against Virginia Tech. The most spectacular play of the afternoon was a 68-yard scoring run by Warren Ratchford. The 5'8", 151-pound junior rushed 10 times during the day for 97 yards. Another Tiger running back, Lester Brown, also had a good day, getting 74 yards on 15 carries. Other highlights were two long punt returns by Willie Jordan and a pair of interceptions by Steve Ryan. Clemson won its fourth and fifth games of the season against Virginia and Duke set up an October 22nd meeting with NC State at Death Valley. Almost 50,000 watched on a beautiful day as the Clemson defense once again rose to the occasion. State quarterback Johnny Evans finds nowhere to go, and after reversing his field, sees Clemson middle guard Tony Williams on the prowl. Williams throws the Wolfpack quarterback for a 30-yard loss. The game breaker on this day was a punt return by Willie Jordan. Jordan fields a line drive kick at his own goal line. Then, behind blocks by Roy Epps, Bob Goldberg, Jim Stuckey, Rex Varn, and Jim Gehring, Willie returns it 76 yards up the left sidelines to the state 24-yard line. The run back set up the game's only touchdown. Clemson quarterback Steve Fuller finds foot end Jerry Butler open on a perfectly timed route. Butler does a nice little juke step and goes in for the score as Clemson takes the lead 7-3. That's the way it ended as another all-ACC selection Steve Ryan closed out state's chances with his fifth interception of the year. Victory number seven followed the next weekend against Wake Forest, setting up the game of the year in the ACC, Clemson against North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Tracy Perry and Lester Brown scored for the Tigers on this day. This is Brown going in from two yards out. However, a missed extra point after Lester left the dance floor proved to be fatal. North Carolina took advantage of a costly Clemson turnover and drove for the tying field goal with just 58 seconds left on the clock. The field goal came despite some fine defensive plays like this one as Jim Stuckey corrals North Carolina quarterback Pat Gay. Final 13-13 tie was all North Carolina needed to win the ACC. But there was no time for looking back as the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame made their way into Death Valley the following week. 
53,000 plus looked on as the Clemson defense again put on a good show against the fifth ranked Irish. Here Mark Hennaford comes up with a big play, stopping Notre Dame's Vegas Ferguson for a loss on a bone jarring tackle. Notre Dame had allowed only one rushing touchdown in nine games, but the Tigers stunned them for two. One of them came when Steve Fuller ran in from the 11-yard line, giving Clemson at that time a 10-7 lead. But the Irish struck for two fourth-quarter touchdowns and handed the Tigers their first loss since the season opener, 21-17. On the final Saturday of the regular season, Clemson traveled to play rival South Carolina for a televised game here on TV 13. The Tigers went out front 24-0, one of the touchdowns coming on a 52-yard run by senior Ken Calicut. Two earlier touchdowns were scored on runs by Warren Ratchford and Lester Brown. Things looked pretty good for Tiger fans, but the Gamecocks were lying in ambush. South Carolina scored 20 straight points, and all of a sudden, Clemson trailed 24 to 20, which is 49 seconds on the clock. Then, taking a page out of a Hollywood script, Fuller found Jerry Butler in the end zone. Butler made just an acrobatic catch, and the Tigers won the ball game 27-21. It ended their season at 8-2 and 1, and a Gator Bowl bid was waiting for them in the locker room. We'll be back with a look at Clemson's opposition tonight, the Pittsburgh Panthers, after these messages. season with Tony Dorsett providing the excitement, the Pittsburgh Panthers beat Georgia in the Sugar Bowl and won the national championship. Dorsett went on to play with the NFL Dallas Cowboys, while Pittsburgh proved to be an outstanding team without him. Under new head coach Jackie Sherrill, Pitt began its season September 10th against Notre Dame. The Panthers scored first, but it turned out to be an extremely costly touchdown. All-American quarterback Matt Cavanaugh dropped back to pass, but was chased in the backfield. Just as he let fly, he was hit and suffered a broken left wrist. As it turned out, the ball was right on target to Gordon Jones in the end zone. Watch for Jones tonight. The six-foot junior is a game-breaker and has a flair for the spectacular. Pitt bounced back from its Notre Dame disappointment with a solid, if unspectacular, 28-6 victory over William & Mary. In his first win as Pitt's head coach, Jackie Sherrill turned to freshman Rick Tricano to replace the injured Kavanaugh. The scoring star of the day was number 34, fullback Elliot Walker, with touchdown runs of 30, 1, and 23 yards. After playing in the shadow of Tony Dorsett for three years, Elliot emerged to prove that he was also a great running back. He fell only 28 yards short of the magic 1,000-yard barrier during the regular season, but should reach that milestone in the Gator Bowl. The next week, Pitt humbled Temple 76 to nothing. Watch for this play tonight. Elliott Walker starts out on the run, then finds flanker Willie Taylor for the touchdown. We talked about Gordon Jones earlier. Here's another example of how dangerous he is. After catching a punt, he streaks 84 yards for a touchdown as Pitt went on to a real big victory. On following Saturday's Pitt route at Boston College and then with Matt Cavanaugh back in the lineup, tied Florida and beat Navy. Then on October 22nd, the Panthers had a scare from Syracuse before winning 28-21. Fortunately for Pitt, Cavanaugh had a good day, hitting 17 of 26 attempts. This pass went 58 yards to halfback Fred Jacobs to tie it at 21-all. On defense, Pitt was led by All-American tackle Randy Holloway. The 6'6", 228-pound senior is a great one, and Clemson may have to double-team him. Easy victories over Tulane, West Virginia, and Army brought the Panthers to a showdown meeting for the Eastern Championship against Penn State on a snowy afternoon. The game was a defensive struggle. Here, Hugh Green, a third-team All-American and only a freshman, stops Penn State's Chuck Fusina. Clemson will also have to watch for Pitt's All-American safety, Bob Jury. With Penn State leading 15 to 7 and Snow now covering the field, Kavanaugh took the Panthers 48 yards in just 29 seconds, scoring on a 17-yard touchdown pass to Gordon Jones. The Panthers went for a two-point conversion, but Elliott Walker was stopped just short of the goal line. Pitt finished with eight wins, two losses, and one tie, and a season-ending meeting with Clemson tonight in the Gator Bowl. Tonight's Gator Bowl will be a showcase for two of the outstanding quarterbacks in the country. The Tigers are directed by the ACC Player of the Year, Steve Fuller. 
The junior from Spartanburg was 96 of 182 through the year for a Clemson record 1,497 yards. Eight of his aerials went for touchdowns, and he had only four passes intercepted all year long. When nobody was open, Fuller could take off and run. He rushed for 403 yards and scored six times. His total offense of 1,900 yards was a new ACC record. Steve, a complete turnaround this year. You have to be pleased. What are your feelings overall on the season? Well, Scott, I think it's just a reward for a lot of hard work we put in. We, we had two horrible years the last two years with the same players, you know, basically that we had this year. And, you know, it's hard to explain, but we're real pleased about the turnaround. I think it's just a case of being a year older and a little more experienced. And Coach Pell and the staff came in and established a winning attitude that, you know, I think was probably the most vital thing in the turnaround. And, you know, it just turned out real well for us all year long. Steve, I followed your career since you were a senior at Spartanburg High School, and I know you had offers from every major football college in the country. You decided to choose Clemson. Did you ever have any doubts the first two years that maybe you made the wrong pick? Well, Scott, no, that's the, the nicest thing about me coming to Clemson so far as I've never had a second thought about it. You know, I went down to Clemson in Georgia and decided on Clemson, and then, you know, two years, Georgia goes to the Cotton Bowl and the Sugar Bowl, and, you know, even on top of that, I wasn't worried about it. I was still happy at Clemson, and I knew things were going to turn around. It just, we had to get down and work on it, and, you know, it did, and now we're looking pretty good, and we've got a good outlook for next year, and we're going to the Gator Bowl, and, you know, I'm still real pleased about it. I love Clemson. Steve, how about the honor of being named ACC Player of the Year? Did you expect that when the season started? Well, I didn't know, sir. Uh, you know, we were just trying to win football games. When you have the years that we had, you know, you don't think about honors. You think about winning football games, that's it. And, you know, those things will take care of themselves. And, you know, it's just a, it's the nicest thing that's ever happened to me. And I'm, I'm real pleased about it. And I don't think it could have, you know, happened if we hadn't had the great team turnaround that we did. And, uh, the good coaching job that we did, and I'm just pleased for everybody. Steve, a great season, and the Tigers' play was characteristic all season long of big plays. Can you remember any one play that you participated in that maybe was the biggest thrill for you this season? The biggest play we made all year. Mm, How about that's... one that you participated in? Well, that's a tough one. I, I like the, uh, the pass that Jerry caught against NC State that we, which was the only time we scored against them, we beat them 7-3, and we had to win that football game. And, I think that was one of the most important. The thing that stands out most in my mind was the Georgia game on defense when they, you know, without playing the whole ball game, probably should have put it away. And then they came down there and hit a long pass on us and scored there with a few seconds to go, and it scared the fool out of me, but it turned out good for us. And, you know, those, those two kind of stand out for me about the year. Steve, you had a great season, but you've got a lot to look forward to. You've got a great career ahead of yourself, not only on the football field, but also in the classroom. You've made one B, I guess, what, since the beginning of your freshman year in high school, and you're a Rhodes Scholar candidate. Where do you go from here? Well, Scott, I'd, you know, I'd like to play four or five years professional ball if it was possible. It's something I can't do anything about. It's, you know, their decision, I just have to wait and see. But, you know, you can't make a life of it, and I'm going to go to law school eventually. I don't know where, as of yet, or when, but I'm going to go in the Rhodes Scholarship thing. I love it. And, you know, I don't know when I'm working in, but I think I can find time. And, you know, people have done it before, and I'd like to, you know, get a chance to do it. Steve, again, congratulations on a great season and good luck against the Panthers. Well, thank you very much, Scott. You know, they're a great team. We'll need the luck, but I think, you know, we'll give them a good shot at it, and I'm looking forward to it. Okay. The Clemson defense will get a tough test tonight, trying to keep Pittsburgh All-American quarterback Matt Cavanaugh from crossing this line. The 6'2", 210-pound senior threw 11 touchdown passes this year, ending his college career with 27 scoring strikes. He was 87 of 151 through the air, and he averaged 16.7 yards per completion. Kavanaugh, like his counterpart tonight, Steve Fuller, can also scramble when the receivers can't get open. Matt, you came in this season as defending national champion, but the year did not get off to a great start for Matt Cavanaugh against Notre Dame. No, not individually. Uh, I got hurt. It was a big disappointment to me. I had worked pretty hard during the summer, but our team did well, and that was, that was my first uh, priority. We, uh, we had some people who could fill in, fortunately, and they did a good job. We won, uh, we won all the games until I got back. How do the Panthers feel about coming to the Gator Bowl? Is there any letdown because last year you were playing for the national championship in the Sugar Bowl, and now you're in Jacksonville, and really nothing except the pride of, of the, the Pittsburgh Panthers rides on the game? Yeah, that, that means a lot to us. There's certainly no letdown. Uh, I think a lot of people got spoiled last year when they saw us play for a national championship, and they say, well, you had an 8-2-1 and one record this year, and you're going to the Gator Bowl. Well, that's, I think it's very, very good for the team that we've got. Uh, and like I said, the pride, which is what we're playing for, means a lot to us. 
Matt, the Clemson Tigers have a very good defense. They've allowed only about an average of 11.9 points a game. How do you figure to attack the Tiger defense? We're aware of that. Uh, I don't know exactly what our game plan is going to be. We're not going to change it drastically. It'll be uh, certainly try to establish a running game like you always do and mix in some passing. Uh, you know, it sounds so basic, but that's what we've been doing uh, for 11 games, and we've been pretty successful with it, so we'll stick to it. Overall, you guys are known for having a good time when you come to a bowl game. Last year, there's a lot written about it at right. the Sugar Bowl. How about this week in Jacksonville? Oh, we can ask any of We did the same thing. I, I've been saying that's our, our two objectives are to have a good time and, uh, and win the football game, and so far, we've, ac we've accomplished half of that, and uh, we've got some guys who will swear to it now. We're going to go out and try and win that football game. We'll see what will happen Friday night. For sure. Good luck on a, in Friday night's game. Congratulations on a good season. Man. Thank you very much. When we return, we'll visit both teams' practice camps. But first, a word from our sponsors. In Jacksonville on Wednesday, December 21st, and have been working out here ever since. We talked with Pitt head coach Jackie Sherrill about the prospects for Friday night's game. Well, it's kind of a normal thing we've been doing uh, to come down early and uh, get, a, get used to the, the atmosphere, get used to you know, the, the, our players to, to let get the fun part out of the way and to also do some work and kind of stretches it out where they can have some free time instead of cramming everything all in, you know, two or three days. There was a lot of pressure on your ball club and you coming in as head coach this year, but you handled it super. The loss of Tony Dorsett, of course, uh, is a loss that anybody has to cope with, but Elliot Walker came through in fine shape. Elliot Walker is uh, really a fine football player. This year he's, he's changed an awful lot, too. He's never really has come out. He's always stayed in the background of Tony. Uh, this year he's become a leader, and he's brought all of our younger backs uh, along, and he's played extremely well, and he is, you know, one fine football player. You've watched your team progress now through the entire schedule. Are they a better team now than they were when the season started? Well, I feel like probably the first quarter in Notre Dame, uh, when Matt was healthy, 100%, that we were uh, really a good football team. But when he got hurt, we started doing some other things. We went back to <clears throat> simplifying our, our offense, and uh, we started running the ball a lot. Uh, I think it made our team better in that way. Uh, but I think overall, it, it gave us the ability to run and throw the football. Jack, I guess you couldn't ask for two more evenly matched teams coming in here to the Gator Bowl. The defenses are almost identical. Both teams have the capability of putting a lot of the points of the board on the board. How do you see that ball game? I think the game is going to be a very exciting football game. Like you said, there's going to be some big plays, big plays defensively because they've got such great talent. I'm really impressed with the linebackers and defensive ends from Clemson. They really can run. They'll hit you. They'll strike you. Scott is something. Uh, uh, offensively, the, you know, both offenses are, are, are similar. They're, they're different. You know, we run the split backs, and Clemson runs a slot eye, but, you know, they come out and throw the curl, the deep out, uh, which uh, he does a terrific job in doing this. Uh, we'll drop back and throw the football, but uh, basically both teams are very exciting. Both teams are very, very quick. Both, both teams are very aggressive. Jackie, is it difficult bringing your team to a bowl game with all the outside pressures uh, that go along with a bowl week? No, well, not really. I think if you're you prepare your team mentally and uh, you know they pretty well know what's going to happen and what's going on if you set your schedule and you include them and when you make your schedule up uh, then you know they have input into the schedule and they feel that uh, when time to work they'll work when it's time to form the play then they enjoy playing well we can't wish you a whole lot of luck against the tigers but we're looking for a real good ball game well i think it will be thank you thank you jackie <laughs> The Clemson Tigers arrived in Florida the day after Christmas on Monday. Coach Charlie Pell electing to give the players a chance to stay home for the holidays. We talked with Coach Pell about this week's practices here in Jacksonville. Well, we had final exams up until the 22nd, and uh, we finished exams. Wanted to uh, have a week's practice there and allow players to be home for Christmas and uh, then report here on Monday. Uh, we really didn't have an option on that, I don't think. Uh, uh, I think it's important that our players uh, spend time mom and daddy on Christmas. Uh, it's the way it should be, and uh, we'll pick up, we'll get back to the uh, swing of things by today and tomorrow. Coach, how difficult is it to practice during a bowl week with all the other outside influences? It's hard. It's hard on the players, and particularly since we've never done it before, and Pittsburgh has done it many times, so this is one of the big advantages they have on us, Scott. How about offense? Now you're going to be without Warren Ratchford. Do you think that will change your offensive strategy at all? No, it won't change our offense. We'll uh, we'll do exactly what we'd planned to do before. Lester Brown's a good running back, and Harold Goggins, and 
uh, we just will not adjust. We're going full choke and, and uh, lay the hammer down. Both teams can crack open the big play in Pittsburgh, especially with a fellow named Elliot Walker. What do you do to try to defense players like that? Scott would try to sneak in about 14 players <laughs> on defense. He's a good back. Uh, and Kavanaugh being a great quarterback makes him better. Both teams have great defenses, but then everyone's predicting a, a high-scoring game. Do you agree? That's because of big play people. And uh, in a bowl game like this, a big plays, kicking game, you know, it makes a lot of points click on that scoreboard. If anything should decide the game, do you think it will be a mistake or will it just be a big play? Oh, it'll be a mistake. Uh, it always is in football, particularly when two good football teams play. And I think it'll be a breakdown in which team will allow the other team to get the big break. Charlie, these teams are so similar all through the season, the records. Both teams lost close games to Notre Dame, and, and you and Jackie Sherrill played together on the same team at Alabama. Do you have any similar coaching philosophies? Maybe we'll see a mirror image come Friday night. No, I don't think so. I think we both uh, would probably like to think that uh, we coach and uh, teach the things that uh, our players can do best. And, uh, that in itself makes it a different uh, different type of situation. Coach, it's great for Clemson to be in a bowl, and good luck tonight. Well, we're just hoping we do a job in helping our people, Scott, uh, play as well as they can play. We'll have more from the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida, after these messages. have been practicing hard all week, but a bid to play in a bowl game is not all work. It, after all, is a reward for a successful season. The Tigers did some sightseeing while they were in Florida this week, and we went along with them. Now here on TV 13, it's Clemson against Pittsburgh in the 1977 Gator Bowl. This game just couldn't have matched up two more even opponents. In the final regular season standings, Pittsburgh was ranked 11th, Clemson was ranked 10th. Both teams have outstanding defenses. Pitt allowed just 11.7 points a game, Clemson 11.9. To add to the similarities, both teams lost close games to Notre Dame, and both coaches played on the same college football team. If there is an advantage, it has to go to the pit offense, which averaged just over 35 points a game. These two teams have never met before, but they couldn't have picked a better time to get together than in the year of the cat. From the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida, Scott Palmer reporting for Dateline Sports.
The Year of the Cat, a preview of tonight's Gator Bowl game, has been a presentation of TV 13 Sports. Stay tuned to WLOS as the Clemson Tigers take on the Pittsburgh Panthers tonight at 9.